Welcome to Naps Lutheran Church. It's a pleasure to be with you on this brisk Sunday morning. Uh, in honor of Veterans Day, if you've ever served in the Armed Forces, uh, we'd like for you to stand up and so we can recognize you at this time. Armed Forces. Uh, Glenn, that's you. <laughs> Paul, you served in the Armed Forces. Thank you. Please stand. Let's give them a round of applause for their service. Thank them and, all, and certainly all of our veterans. 
Uh, the missions committee invited uh, Pastor Harvey Kabinga, who is uh, a bishop in Malawi. Uh, I think he has 30 churches that he oversees. Um, he hasn't made it yet, but if he does make it, we'll be sure to give him some time to just talk a little bit about his ministry. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep a lookout for him. And he'll also be speaking briefly as well at the adult forum. Okay, I think that's all I have. Let's, uh, let's stand and, oh, no, Jerry has an announcement, sorry. Good morning. I just want to kick off the miracle of Christmas. I think probably everyone is pretty familiar with it. We are sponsoring, providing food and gifts for 15 families that uh, LMS works with throughout the year. Uh, the uh, sign-up sheet for the food boxes will be in the back, uh, as well as the envelopes and the money you get to do the food shopping. Uh, the uh, gift tags will be there, and probably uh, I'll move them across to, uh, to the fellowship hall a little bit later. Uh, you know, nothing's really changed year to year. Uh, if you look at, I think everyone's getting handed one of those. It pretty much explains everything. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Great way for us to show the love of Christ during the uh, Christmas season. Please let us stand now and continue our worship with the confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Merciful Lord, as we await the day to come when Christ returns... We grow impatient as we wait. We become, we become distracted by the things of this world that do not last and have given our attention to our devotion to things not beneficial to our faith. Forgive us. Come when Christ returns, we grow impatient with others. We have sinned against others and you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us. As we await the day to come when Christ returns, we grow impatient with you. We come to think the day will never come when you make all things new and have let our earthly circumstances cause faith to waver, despair to increase, and doubts to arise. Forgive us. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us in singing, <clears throat> Come Let Us Worship.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him or went into a house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we, are who, that we who are alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then who are alive, who are left, will be, call, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all all the virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Peace to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated and let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The second article of the Creed, the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, is a good place to get started this morning. Every week we confess in this Creed that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. And as you've seen so far in our liturgy, we've been referencing this event. It's a reference to the, what Christian theology calls the eschaton meaning the final divine event, the final thing that God's going to do. Or we sometimes call it the last day, or most popularly, the second coming of Christ. So we'll use those words interchangeably. Now, while mystery surrounds this, the scriptures do give us some insight into what this will be and what this will be like. 
Today's readings, for example, teach us that while the last day will be a time of judgment, it will also be a time of celebration. They also suggest that we should be prepared for it, and finally, that we should pray for it. The parable in today's gospel passage suggests that the last day or the second coming of Christ will be like a sporting event. I know, here I am using a football reference again. Some of the people will be happy, and some will be quite disappointed. The five wise bridesmaids, that's another word here. That's that's really what the word virgin here means, is bridesmaid. The five wise bridesmaids got to enjoy the wedding feast, reference to the kingdom, reference to salvation, while the foolish ones did not. Some Some celebrate, some do not. C.S. Lewis observes that C.S. Lewis observes that on the last day, the last day will reveal God without disguise, in pure form, and it will be, here's what he says, something so overwhelming that it will either strike irresistible love or irresistible horror into every creature. Again, you see that dichotomy. It will it will strike irresistible love or irresistible horror into every creature. So the obvious question before us then is how do we get on the winning team? How how can this day be one of happiness and joy for us rather than judgment and remorse and disappointment? I was asking a similar question back in the spring before running in my first Spartan challenge, which it sounds a lot harder than it is, It's just a 5K run with some obstacles. But I was asking my friend, who had run one before, if it was going to be fun, right? And I was also worried about embarrassing myself. So I was like, is everything going to be okay, right? He said, look, you're going to be fine if you prepare. You're going to be fine if you prepare. Perhaps the main point of this parable today is that you will be fine. And you will, be, you will be celebrating as if attending a wedding on the last day if you are prepared for it. And if you're prepared, it'll be great. Now the prophet Amos, you heard, the, you heard that reading from the prophet Amos. It's a hard-hitting text. And it warns of false or incomplete preparation. Right? He contends... Amos contends that ritual alone does not suffice as preparation. Why would you have the day of the Lord, he says. In other words, are you sure? Are you sure that you want this last day to come? Here's what he says. I hate, I despise your feast, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Take away the noise of your songs, right? But let justice roll down like waters and let righteousness, holiness, like an ever-flowing stream. It reminds us of Isaiah 29, when God says, These people honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. It's just not enough to go through the ritual is what he's saying. We often hear the word orthodoxy, which means right doctrine, right doctrine. There's also a lesser known word called uh, orthopraxy, which means right practice or right ritual. So I believe Amos' point in this text is that right doctrine and right practice don't mean much if right living doesn't follow suit, if right living doesn't follow suit. Only beg for me strength within and without, wrote St. Ignatius, that I, may, that I may be a man not merely of words, but also of resolution. I wish not merely to be called a Christian, he says, but also be a Christian. No doubt Christianity consists of a set of beliefs and practices, but it also consists of being a particular type of person. Our prayer after communion, the one that we say at the traditional service, we pray that God gave Jesus to be a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. 
right belief and right practice lead, or hopefully lead, to right living. Living like Christ, walking with Christ, following the example of Christ. The wise bridesmaids in our parable symbolize those who walked with Christ, those who modeled Christ. The whole idea of the lamps was to escort the groom into the wedding feast because they typically happened at night. So the ones who left to get more oil missed out on this procession. They missed out on walking with the groom who represents Jesus into the wedding feast. Right? They missed out on walking with Christ, in other words. Keep in mind, keep in mind the foolish ones were there. They knew the process. They knew the routine. They knew the ritual. But they were not there to escort the groom in the end. They were not there to walk with Jesus when it was time to do so. We can know doctrine. We can do the rituals. But for us to be judged living, for us to enter into the kingdom, we must walk with Christ. We must walk with Jesus Christ. What does he say earlier in Matthew's gospel? If anyone should follow me, Jesus says, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. Pretty clear. This does not mean perfect living, obviously. We confess that we're in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. But it does mean to die to sin every day through prayer, through service, through worship, through scripture reading. And hopefully to rise and look a little bit more like Jesus. It means we want our lives to reflect our doctrine and our practice. In his book, Resident Aliens, Stanley Harawas contends that American Christians tend to inoculate themselves with a mild form of Christianity to protect, to protect themselves from the real thing. Kind of like if you get immunized with the flu, you get a small dose of the flu so you don't get the real thing. That's the, that's the metaphor he's using here. Our text today, Amos in particular and the gospel, call us away from a deluded form of Christianity and charges us to embrace the real thing. He charges us to embrace the real thing in preparation of that last day. If we walk with Christ and are prepared for the last day, it will be a joyous occasion. And that is why Christians are taught to pray for it. To pray for this day to finally be realized. Psalm 70. In Psalm 70, the psalmist writes, O Lord, make haste to help me. Come speedily to me, O God, he continues. And finally, O Lord, do not tarry. Do not delay. Now certainly this this psalm can be a prayer for God to providentially intervene in this person's life. But this kind of prayer has been used by Christians to plead with God to bring his divine plan to fulfillment. To begin the wedding feast. Come Lord Jesus, come. Begin this feast so we can walk with you there. I heard a preacher say once that the way things are are not the way things are supposed to be. Yet the way that things are supposed to be Yet the way that things are supposed to be will someday be. We have a world dominated and engrossed in sin, leading to strife, hatred, division, and all sorts of evil. But we are supposed to live in harmony, peace, and tranquility. That's what God intended anyways. The eschaton, the last day, the second coming, promises that the living, those who are in Christ... Those who walk with Christ will never again experience anything resembling evil and sin. It will be the way it was supposed to be. Why not pray for such a reality? Why not pray? Why not pray as the psalmist and plead with God to make haste to help us? It's like, it's like, saying, that, it's like saying make haste to finally purge evil and sin from the world. Of course we want that. Marguerite Higgins was a news correspondent during the Korean conflict. One bitter winter's day, she began interviewing a 
a muddy Marine who had just returned from a lost battle. As he opened his can of sea rations and began eating, Higgins, the reporter, came to the young man and asked him, If I could give you anything in the world that you wanted, what would you ask for? The Marine thought for a moment and he said, Give me tomorrow. Give me tomorrow. Give me a tomorrow without war. Give me a tomorrow without greed. Give me a tomorrow without despair. Give me a tomorrow without suffering. Give me a tomorrow without evil. Isn't that what we all pray for? Isn't that what we all hope for? If somebody were to ask me why I'm a Christian, there's a lot of answers I could give them, but if somebody were to ask me why I'm a Christian, I would say because I get to experience tomorrow today. I get to experience tomorrow today. Because when we gather as children of God around the Word and the sacrament of Holy Communion, the future breaks in. The future breaks in. And we get a foretaste. We get a foretaste of the tomorrow that we all hope for. Thanks be to God. Please rise and join us in singing My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
these are the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He went under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us approach the throne of grace, there to pray for the church, the world, and for one another. Heavenly Father, we are sometimes foolish, not wise, scatterbrained, not prudent, reactive, not responsive. Forgive us. Remind us of the honor and privilege of being invited to your son's wedding feast. Give us the grace and wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Let us always rejoice, believe, and show the light of faith, hope, and love in this dark world. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, make your church wise, faithful, pure, and watchful, rejoicing in the near approach of her bridegroom and Savior. Make her worship joyful and pleasing in your sight. Make her labors glorify you and help those in distress. Help her feast a foretaste of your heavenly wedding banquet, feeding all with truth, righteousness, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Give patience, kindness, comfort, and hope to your persecuted church. Help us provide for their needs and bear witness to their suffering. Turn the hearts of their enemies to seek your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Make everyone in this congregation into lamps shining with your light and love. Keep us constantly worshiping you and serving others. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to share your grace and favor with all those whose lights are flickering out. Lord, in your mercy. Let your justice roll down like waters upon this parched and broken world. Let your righteousness fill the hearts and minds of all who are entrusted with authority. Especially we pray for our elected and appointed leaders. Give them your spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel, and might. So that they may bring peace, prosperity, justice, and healing to our land. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, on this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for all who have honorably served their country. Grant wisdom, courage, integrity, and sound judgment to everyone currently serving in the military and to all who risk their lives on behalf of community and country. Use their skills to bring freedom, safety, and justice wherever they serve. Keep them safe, shield their loved ones from grief and fear, and grant them a swift and joyful homecoming. Lord, in your mercy. Let all who seek your help in their times of trial find deliverance from all that troubles them. We remember before you today, especially all those in our midst, on our own prayer list here at Annapolis Lutheran. Grant them health and salvation, justice and comfort, hope and guidance. With their lamp of faith seems ready to flicker and fade, rekindle them with the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. And give a double portion of that same spirit to all who minister to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and graciously grant all that glorifies you and benefits our poor, broken world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ.
Wrong place. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we're humble and thankful for your Holy Spirit that calls and gathers us together into your church. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to grant us what we need to wait patiently and to be prepared for the day of the Lord when you come to judge the living and the dead. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon the rest of our service as we go to partake in the Holy Sacrament of Holy Communion. In your name we humbly and gratefully pray. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, In giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. of God, for the people of God, come taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen.
thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same faith towards you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please join us in singing the closing hymn, I Will Wait for You.
Our special guest, Pastor Harvey Covina, has arrived. Welcome. We're so glad that you can make it. In the interest of time, uh, we will uh, hear from him during our adult forum hour, which will take place in about 10 minutes. So please stick around if you want to hear more about his ministry and his mission uh, for Christ and the kingdom. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.